Here's something you didn't know. We moved into this house so we could convert the living room and dining room into the ultimate music and YouTube studio. And in the last couple days, I put the finishing touches on it, installing new furniture, bringing out some classic gear from storage, redoing the cables, adding acoustic treatment. And today I'm gonna show you everything. All the new stuff, the vintage gear, outboard gear, keyboards, furniture, and the amazing little things that improve my music work flow and just make me happy. Welcome to my full studio tour. I want to start with the one item in the studio that gets the most questions, the desk. This is a seven foot desk built by Monkwood Studio. It's handmade with solid suntanned poplar and has some interesting and hidden features. First of all, it's sit stand, which helps keep me on my feet sometimes, but also helps when I film, I can get gear at camera height really fast. It has a built-in drawer for an 88 key keyboard and a hidden drawer for my Roly Seaboard and Lumis. It also fits the full size Seaboard Rise, more on the rise later on. Under the desk, Monkwood designed a hidden shelf for cables and surge protectors. The rack shelves on top are movable so I can easily reach in the back to get to cables or move them completely off the desk to film. So Monk builds desks for well-known music producers and artists. Yeah, this is Ryan Tedder and Paul McCartney in this photo. Three years ago when I talked to him on the phone for the first time, I was so nervous. I mean, he's worked with such big names and he only takes on a few projects at a time. I had less than 10,000 subscribers at the time and I was like, hey, I hope to be a big YouTuber one day. Can you build me a desk? And he was so nice and well, the rest is history. These desks aren't cheap, but they are a lifetime investment. In fact, they'll probably last multiple lifetimes. Okay, while we're at the desk, let me talk about all the gear I keep within reach. My dog choice is Ableton Live and it runs beautifully on this Mac. Everything here is running on this 14 inch MacBook Pro. This is an M1 Mac, 64 gigabyte, eight terabyte SSD MacBook. It's certainly overkill for music production, but I also added videos on this, so I need that extra space and power. By the way, what computer are you using for music production? Let me know in the comments below. The MacBook is connected by one Thunderbolt cable to the CalDigit TS4 that is the hub for everything else connected here. This is an excellent Thunderbolt hub, but honestly, I've had more problems with the TS4 than the previous TS3, so if you're interested in getting one of these, I suggest get the previous model, the TS3. You'll save some money and you're gonna love it. I'm gonna put links to everything I mentioned in this video in the description below. The monitor I'm using is a 34 inch LG 5K 2K monitor, which has been really good. It's got great resolution with Ableton Live and it's great for video editing too. On top of the monitor is a BenQ Screen Bar Plus lamp. It's a great little lamp and it saves my eyes in the dark. If you're working late nights, get one of these lamps. All right, let's get through all the gear left to right. Okay, we've got more boxes and you're in the middle of your tour. <laughs> all right, we're constantly getting boxes like these. Hey, you wanna unbox them? Let's uh, see what's in them. Yeah, and I definitely wanna put these down because they're heavy. <laughs> all right, Dorothy's gonna be unboxing those and we'll check in with her later in the video. Okay, I've got a mic arm clamped to the desk. This is the Rode PSA-1. I've got the Universal Audio Sphere LX modeling mic on the arm right now. It's a great mic that emulates other popular and more expensive of mics out there. I recently did a review on this mic. You should check it out. You can watch it right here. Oh, I love this little gadget. This is a quick release adapter by Gator Frameworks. So much faster to switch mics with this thing. Look at that, no more twisting for hours. On top of the left shelf is an Orange Machine Mark III, one of only 100 made worldwide. The Orange version was released during Native Instruments' 10-year machine anniversary, which I was invited to attend with other creators. Okay, I've got the Odyssey LCD5 headphones sitting right here. These are the top-of-the-line headphones by Odyssey, and we visited their factory in California last summer. Okay, this first rack holds my interfaces and my favorite mic preamp. My main interface is the Apollo X8. It's a great interface that has those unison preamps, lots of inputs, but apparently not enough. I've got another Apollo 8 right above it, really just to add more inputs. It's really easy to expand with these interfaces. You can daisy chain them using Thunderbolt or use an optical cable with another interface. 
These have DSP, which means I can run plugins using the computer power in them. But since Universal Audio has been releasing their plugins in native form now, I'm starting to use those more. I've also got the Apollo Twin X here to control monitor volume mostly, but it's also useful to just quickly connect gear with the inputs that are so easily accessible. Okay, above my interfaces, I've got the BAE 1073 MP preamp. Every microphone sounds better when run through this. It adds that bit of saturation and harmonics that make microphones shine. It's probably the one piece of gear that's impacted my mic recordings the most. It's based on the Neve 1073 preamp. You can try to emulate this with plugins, but I haven't found a plugin that can match the sound of this preamp. The real thing is actually worth it. My main keyboard is the Native Instruments S88. It's got hammer action keys, excellent control of Native Instruments plugins, and even the Ableton mixer. This keyboard has been out for some years now. I hope they update it with some new features soon and maybe drum pads, hello native instruments, get your drum pads on this. Now you saw a sneak peek of this hidden drawer above it. I usually have the Roly Seaboard Rise 2 in here, but for now I wanted to add some lights and color. These are two Lumi keyboards by Roly and the original Seaboard block. I started my YouTube channel five years ago with an unboxing of the Seaboard block and Check it out. I had this one signed by The Frenetic. I have a computer keyboard and trackpad. This is the Logitech MX Keys Mini. Logitech makes the best keyboards and mice, but the ultimate trackpad is by Apple. I use a trackpad instead of a mouse to keep things quiet when I film tutorials and stuff. Now, this is something really special. It's a modular controller by Monogram. You can use these with other programs like Photoshop, but they also have scripts for Ableton, Logic, Cubase, and other DAWs. I can use it to control the mixer, virtual instruments, and more. I love that it's modular, so you can just add the components that you use most. So convenient having this on my desk rather than reaching under for my MIDI keyboard. I'll add a link to this in the video description. It's a referral link, so you'll get a discount if you use it. Oh, by the way, back here, I've got some Apple AirPods, the AirPod Pros. I use this for conference calls and for traveling. I love these when I travel. Dorothy, how's that unboxing going? Explain to your audience oh, cool. okay, <laughs> more cool. of what this is. Oh, I like the bottom of this. Yeah, right? Okay, we gotta try this out on the desk. This is the new Matrix controller. I'll test it out and let you know what I think real soon. Let's keep moving. I've got the Sequential Prophet 6 on my desk right now. This is the version without the keyboard. The synth sounds spectacular and is so easy to use with all these knobs. I played the Prophet 6 in a music store some years ago and bought it like almost right after. Sequential just makes amazing synths. Oh, this is my Taylor acoustic guitar. Dorothy got this as a gift for me. I love it. She actually bargained at Guitar Center to get some free stuff with this. She's really good at the bargaining stuff. Below the Prophet 6, I've got one of the best, if not the very best compressor, the TubeTech CL1B. This is an optical tube compressor and it's so transparent. I usually record vocals through the BAE 1073, then through the CL1B and it just sounds heavenly. This is Rome, a cat that we rescued. He prefers boxes to cat toys, but he is really good at shaking hands. Hey Rome, shake. Good boy. Looks like somebody's been messing with my settings. Rome. By the way, Rome would appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe if you enjoy videos like these. Right, Rome? I like having a keyboard right next to my desk sometimes. I have the Seaboard Rise 2 here right now. I love that this is Bluetooth, so no cables needed to my computer. Behind my desk, I've got my studio monitors. These are the Barefoot Footprint 01s. Great monitors with side subwoofers, and they have a neat little trick. They have this remote control that lets me switch the sound from the default Barefoot sound to a hi-fi stereo sound to NS10s and even cube speakers. Very cool trick that I don't use often enough.
I like not having a separate subwoofer since these put out a really good amount of bass, but I think it's time for a change. What studio monitors do you think I should get next? Comment below. The monitors are sitting on ISO acoustic isolation stands, which make a difference to my ears, but some people say they can't tell the difference. I always say, who cares what other people hear? All that matters is what you hear. It's your mix, your music. Use what you love. I've got some lights and a diffuser back here as well. I'll go through the lights and the acoustic treatment later in the video. Oh, I've got to talk about the screen behind the desk. You see this in every video and the artwork changes every time. This is the frame by Samsung. It's a 75 inch TV that displays artwork and it just adds to the vibe of the studio. And I love changing the backdrop for each one of my videos. I can change the vibe anytime and I can also use it as a second monitor and for gaming too. The chair I've been using lately is the Herman Miller Aeron gaming chair. Okay. Lots more to cover. Let's check out something you've never seen before. Before we continue, I have to thank the sponsor of today's video, Sweetwater. All the gear you've seen in this video can be found on sweetwater.com. Well, except maybe some of the vintage gear. Actually, wait, you can find that on Sweetwater too. Yeah, they have a gear exchange site now as well. You can buy and sell your gear on Sweetwater. Get some deals, people. Anyway, you've heard about Sweetwater before on my channel. I get lots of my gear from there and I really like their sales support. They actually know about the gear and they'll give you practical recommendations, not just push you to buy the most expensive options. I actually find a lot of the deals that I bring you every week in my news reports from Sweetwater. Price drops, rebates, B-stock. Yeah, I really like finding a deal. Sweetwater has everything from keyboards, audio interfaces, mics, guitars, recording gear, and plugins. I'll add links to all the gear you've seen in this tour on sweetwater.com below the video. Now let's get back to that tour. I just installed some new outboard gear into another piece of furniture made by Monkwood Studio. I love this pull out drawer right here. I have the Push 2 in it. Push 2 is the best Ableton controller you can get and it's amazing for a live performance. It's a bit too big to have on my desk at all times so I love that I can now have it close by. Hey, before I get to the gear, I have this Amazon Echo Show on top here. I use it to keep track of my lists, reminders, appointments. I can share the calendar here so Darthi and I can keep track of our appointments together. I can also use to power on and off the entire studio. All I have to say is start studio and the gear turns on in sequence. Let me explain. I have these smart plugs that can be used with when I want to power on the studio, I can have her sequence the powering on of the different smart plugs. I'm using the GoSun smart plugs right now, but any smart plug will work. She starts the audio interfaces first, along with some other gear, and then last, turns on the speakers. This helps avoid speaker pops, which can damage your speakers. The reverse happens when I tell to turn off the studio. Speakers turn off first, and then the rest of the gear. By the way, if you have any questions about any of this stuff, let me know in the comments below. Under the push two is the Universal Audio LA2A compressor. Iconic. You've probably got the plug-in version of this on your computer right now. It's so easy to use with just two knobs. You can use it on vocals, guitars, bass, anything. But this one is special. I actually bought this on Reverb.com. It was previously owned by Ben Folds. It's right from Ben Folds Studio. And I got it for the same price as other used LA2As. Next, I have the Arturia Audio Fuse 8 Pre. It's another interface, and I use it to handle the keyboards and synths on the side. It's got lots of inputs, and it's a solid interface for the price. It connects with the Universal Audio interfaces with an optical cable, and I can access all the channels in the Apollo Virtual Mixer. Under that, I've got a Furman power conditioner, multiple power outlets for the gear in this rack. Next up, I've got the Avalon 737 channel strip. This is a great channel strip used by lots of artists. Great for R&B, pop, rap. I think John Mayer uses it as well. Now, I got a deal on this with the Tube Tech compressor when I bought it on eBay. Two for one deal, which was excellent. I wasn't planning on keeping the Avalon since I prefer the BAE 1073 and the Tube Tech compressor, 
but it's a bit of nostalgia for me. Around 14 years ago, I had to sell some of my studio gear before I got married. I needed to save some money at the time, and after 14 years, I have it again after starting this YouTube channel. Last in this rack, I've got the Universal Audio 1176 LN, which is another iconic compressor. I've always wanted an LA-2A and 1176 together, and now I can record with that classic combo. You can push the 1176 pretty hard to get some major compression that just cuts through a mix so well. If you had to choose, what would you pick? 1176 or the LA-2A? Comment below. Oh, by the way, there's a new camera sitting back there. I'm testing it out for some live streaming videos that you guys might see on the channel soon. Okay, this has to be the coolest keyboard rack I've ever found. If you've never seen this before, it's called slat wall. It's these thin panels that fix directly to the wall, and you can get a lot of accessories to attach to it, including keyboard stands, guitar hangers, and more. I've got another bigger slat wall over there. I'll get to that in a sec. Slat wall can hold a lot of weight if you secure it well, and now I can get different size keyboard arms, switch up the keyboards, and so much more. You can get this stuff on Amazon. I'll add a link below. So let's check out what I have mounted here right now. I've got my newest keyboard, the Korg Op6 up top. This is an FM synth. I really like synths that are easy to tweak, and this one is pretty simple to use with the knobs and faders. Korg recently discontinued this synth, so I got it at a really good deal. I have to say though that my favorite synth is the Korg Mini Log, which I don't have, but I borrowed to make a video some time ago. I really want to get that synth back. Okay, right beside it, I've got the Uno Synth Pro by IK Multimedia. This is a polyphonic synth, which really sounds nice and doesn't get enough love in my opinion. The key feel is better than the Korg, and it's relatively inexpensive. Next up, I actually put a turntable on this shelf. I put it here in hopes that I'll actually use it more. Right now I have the Abbey Rhodes album by the Beatles on here. Maybe I should start sampling vinyl on this next. The next keyboard really surprised me when I got it. It's the Mellotron. This is a digital keyboard, unlike the tape-based original Mellotron, but it contains samples from the originals. There's always something interesting I can create from the sounds in here. You can mix two sounds together and everything has that old school lo-fi sound to it. Check it out. You can even manually change the pitch to get that tape wobble effect. I've got two guitars here. This is the Fender Stratocaster. I love the sunburst on here, so I have to get another sunburst guitar, and this is the Gibson Les Paul. I need to practice guitar more. This is my Rhodes Fender One Stage Piano. I bought it on eBay years ago, back when you could get a Rhodes for $600. This one has the Buzz Watson business card in it. Buzz Watson is a legendary Rhodes technician and is associated with some of the best Rhodes ever built. Now, I can't tell if this one was built by him, but it's got the business card in it and it's glued where the stamp would have been with his name, so I'm not sure. But regardless, I love this. I love the sound of my Rhodes and I actually created my very own virtual instrument sampled from this very Rhodes Mark I piano. I sampled every single note in multiple velocities. You can download a free preset I made with it on sunjc.com, or you can buy the full sampled instrument so I can get more gear. No, seriously, you'll love it. I know some YouTubers that use it all the time. Sitting on my roads is the Lego DeLorean time machine from Back to the Future, my favorite movie ever. Look, the doors open, and it can even convert to the flying DeLorean. Toys are a big part of my studio. I have this love of toys from my childhood, and I have to share another one with you before I get to the next room. Yes, we have another whole room to go. Optimus Prime? Greetings. Convert. Stop the descent. 
Decepticons. Let's go. Don't fall. <laughs> Is he dancing? Martial arts. Oh, yes. I don't know how oh. he doesn't fall. <laughs> Stay in shape, people. Yes, look at those crunches. <laughs> I love that. That's the coolest thing ever. Kyoto, yes. do you see? Kyoto doesn't like Optimus Prime. Let's check out Kyoto next. This is Kyoto, our Silky Terrier. Kyoto knows some tricks too. Kyoto, spin, spin. Good girl, touch. Good girl, shake. Good girl. Down, roll over. Good girl, come here. Bang. Good girl. <laughs> yeah, I'm dead. How am I gonna get this treat? Thanks everybody. Let's continue with the tour. So this space is supposed to be the living room of this house, but we converted it into the secondary studio space, the synth room. I use this space to play around with synths and stuff and just come up with ideas. It's an inspiration space mostly, but it's also useful to film in. I love the wide open space here because it helps when I film really large gear and I need all my camera equipment and stuff here. Okay. I'm gonna to get to this in a second, but before we get to the big synth wall, I wanna show you a couple things over here. This is really just a display shelf for some things that I love. One of the things I love most is this Lametric clock. It doesn't just show the time, but also the weather, YouTube stats and Instagram stuff. I love this thing. Link is in the description because I know I'm gonna get a ton of questions on this. This is a little figurine that we got in New York. This is Darth. Behind that is a rocket. This is the Tintin rocket from the Destination Moon comic book. I've got another machine here. This is a limited edition purple machine. I think if you collect all colors, you get a free toy or something. Native Instruments, where's my free toy? I've also got the Moog Siren here and the Biodynamics DT1990 headphones. These are spectacular open back headphones, crystal clear sound and super comfortable. I've got a Sonos speaker down here. I've got Sonos throughout this house to enjoy music. I've also got the Expressive E Touche right here. This is a work of art and sound. It's such a cool MIDI controller. Okay, at the bottom here is a cool piece of gear. This is a drum machine that was owned by Moby. Yeah, the electronic artist from the 90s. This was his. The sounds on this thing are pretty unique, very electronic. I'm gonna sample the sounds from this and share it with you all soon. Above this shelf, I've got my YouTube plaque for reaching 100,000 subscribers. This reminds me of you all every day I'm in my studio. Thanks for making all this happen. I'm so proud of this accomplishment, but I know I couldn't have done it without you. Okay, who's ready for the wall of synths? And after that, I'm gonna talk about the acoustic treatment. It's really made a huge difference in the sound in this room. All right, let's see what's in this one. Whoa, it is so heavy. She looks so excited. Whoa, this might be treasure. Ah! You need some help? <laughs> yes, this is Ready? heavy. Whoa. We have to reveal this at the end of the video because it seems pretty epic. This is my synth wall and a lot changes over here. Things move in and out a lot. I've got the brand new Artoria Mini Freak up here. I've been trying this out for a few weeks now. I love the Micro Freak, which is over there. This is the big brother. Next, I've always wanted a Jupiter synth. This is the Jupiter XM. It's a Jupiter synth in a small package. You can even run this on battery power, which is super cool. It's got so many sounds from the vintage Roland keyboards. I just love it. Next up is the Arturia Mini Brute 2. Super nice bass and lead sounds from this. I've had this one for a while. Thanks, Arturia. Here's another one from Sequential. It's the Take 5. This is the most affordable Sequential synth you can get, I think, but it still has that super high quality feel to it. Listen to this. Okay, you gotta check this out. 
This little gadget is a cleaning brush for your synths. I have to shout out Bo Beats for sharing this tool. I think he has a different one, but I found this one on Amazon. I'll link to it below. So easy to get into every crevice. Okay, so I've got this Solina string ensemble right here. This one is super interesting because it was owned by the Eagles and used on tour and in one of their music videos. I love the Eagles and this is one of my prized keyboards. The Selena String Ensemble makes string sounds. You can combine viola, violin, trumpet, cello, and horn sounds together. It was used a lot in the 1970s by Pink Floyd, Stevie Wonder, Elton John, Hall & Oates, and others. Next is the Roland TR-8S drum machine. Again, great Roland sounds, a little difficult to use. You really need to learn the menus well, but the sounds are good. Under that, I have my favorite vintage synth, the Juno 106 by Roland. Great pad sounds from this. It's so easy to use and get sounds that sound good. If you want a vintage synth, these are relatively inexpensive and very easy to find and even get serviced. Below that, I've got the Micro Freak and the Machine Plus. This is the standalone machine, so I can use this without a computer. It's perfect for getting some drums in this area with all the other synths here. None of this stuff is connected to the main desk right now. That's something I want to do in the near future. All these synths and the machine are connected to this mixer. It's the Mackie Pro FX12. It's a great affordable mixer. The mixers go out to the output frontier speakers on either side. These output speakers sound excellent and they're actually made by Barefoot. Decent price too. They're sitting on my favorite monitor stands by Ultimate Support. These are some of the nicest stands available out there. It has a cable pass-through, which hides the cables inside the stand. I use this cabinet to store some of my studio gear, like microphones and headphones. I've got the Neumann headphones right here, and also Austrian audio headphones. I've got some mics ready to go, the OC18 by Austrian Audio, and the Earthworks mic that I used in my Complete 14 video. I've got the Shure SM7B and my favorite $100 budget mic, the MXL 770. Oh, and yeah, I won an orchestral competition back in 1993. I got to play with an orchestra. 1993, that was a long time ago. I don't even remember what the piano piece was that I played, fidget. I've got some more headphones in this drawer as well. A bunch from Bayer Dynamic, Audio Technica, Neumann, and AI, AI, AI. These are the Neumann open backs. This is the microphone I've been using lately and it's right here on this awesome stand. This is a heavy duty stand by Latch Lake and I love it. The only thing I trust to hold my Sony C800 microphone. This microphone has been used by Sean Mendez, Kendrick Lamar, Drake, Rihanna, the list goes on and on. These are not in production at the moment and have been extremely hard to find. So people have been selling them secondhand for like crazy amounts of money. I was lucky enough to find one locally at Chuck Levin's music store. I've got the Aston Halo mic shield behind it. I've used this for lots of my microphone comparison videos. So what about the acoustic treatment? All the acoustic treatment you see in the studio is from Prime Acoustic, and it's made a huge difference. I'll show you what I've got, but first, listen to the difference in sound before and after. much better reduction in echoes. I've got a number of different types of panels from Prime Acoustic, including thick absorbers and some smaller panels as well. These are not foam panels. They contain a denser fiberglass material that absorbs a lot more than foam. That means even thinner panels provide better absorption than just a bunch of thick foam. When you upgrade to the better acoustic material, things do get a bit more expensive, but I find that Prime Acoustic stuff is 
pretty reasonably priced. I also have a couple of diffusers near the desk. These get rid of echoes and standing waves. Usually install this behind your listening position, but I find they even help right here in the front. They've also got some nice kits that come with different sized panels all in one. I'll add links below to some of the kits that I like. Okay, the gear creates the music, but what creates the vibe in here? Well, I've got these two huge fluffy balls that are so much fun to sit on. They remind me of sheep and we got them from Timothy Alton. I've also got a lounge chair where Dorothy has finished unboxing a secret package. Ugh, what is in here? Whoa, okay, I need to turn this around. Magnets? This is super cool. What's in here? Ooh, wires. This whole thing is magnetic. Wait, where's my cutter? Watch this. Oh, never mind. Oh, there we go. All right, what's in this one? Manuals. You know we don't read the manuals. Dun, dun, dun. Wait, what is this? Kito, you've got to see this. Wow. This looks like really, really heavy duty stuff. Look at this microphone. It's got a bulb, you can see. We've got to set this up in the studio. Dorothy and I are going to set up the Lewitt LCT 1040 mic and I'll feature it in a future video. Stay tuned. Oh, the lights. I've got two lights behind the desk that shoot colors to the diffusers. Those lights are the Godox LC500R stick lights. They provide the most bang for your buck for lights. I also have Philips Hue light strips behind the desk. All right, that's it for the studio tour. If you have any questions, leave them below. I'm happy to answer anything. And if you'd like to know how that Sony microphone sounds, watch the video here where I compare it to the Universal Audio Sphere microphone. Keep making the music you love. Bye.